Okay, thank you and welcome to the kickoff meeting for the national relays as part of the relay <coughs> of the European Road Safety Charter. My name is Alexandra Humphreysbach and I'm the project manager for the new European Road Safety Charter contract. I work for Ricardo, who have been appointed by DG Move to manage the charter on their behalf. My role today is to guide you through the programme. I'm very pleased that so many are able to join us today. I would also like to thank you for joining the charter as a national relay, and I look forward to many months of productive collaboration to support the EU in achieving its Vision Zero goal. If we can move to the next slide, please. And the next one, please. However, before we start with our first presentation, I would like to point out a few housekeeping rules. The main session will be recorded. Ensure your display name is correct, first name and second name. This can be changed by finding yourself in the participants window and clicking on more and rename. Attendee microphones are muted. However, you can unmute yourself if called upon to do so. The mute icon is at bottom left of the screen. You can submit questions throughout the event using the chat function at the bottom center of the screen. Please send your questions to Thomas Harold and he will read them out during the Q&A segments. Or during the Q&A sessions, you can ask a question in person. Please use the raise hand icon, which is at the bottom left of the participants window. Thomas or I will then invite you to unmute yourself during the Q&A session. Also, we'll be running two breakout sessions today. You will be automatically entered to the breakout session and you will not be able to swap rooms. During the breakout sessions, please turn your camera on and unmute yourself. Both icons are at the bottom left of the screen. Finally, we would like to ask you to complete the survey feedback. The SurveyMonkey link will be provided at the end of today's event. If we can move to the next slide, please. So let's get started. I'm very pleased that we are joined today by Matthew Baldwin, Deputy Director General for DG Move, and also European Coordinator for Road Safety. He will start us off with an overview of the Commission's vision for the Charter. At this stage, I would also like to welcome Sarah Lynch, who's DG Project Officer for the Charter. There will be time for a few questions for Matthew before we move on to our second presentation by Vincent Leroy, who many of you will have already met, also probably just virtually. Vincent is the Charter's road safety expert from our partners at VIAS. He will explain the role of the national relay and will also share the list of all national relays. Later in the day, my colleague Lindsay Thiel, communications lead for the Charter at Ricardo, will tell you about our plans on how to engage with stakeholders and members and what tools support will be available to you. Today, we will also hear from Fernando Camarero, who is the national contact point for the Charter at Fundación Mapfre in Spain. And we will also hear from Vasiliki Danelli Milona, who's the president of BOD at the Road Safety Institute, RSI Panos Milonas in Greece. They will both describe their experience in supporting the charter and their vision for becoming a national relay. We will finish off the day with a Q&A session. So let me now hand over to Matthew. Hello, I'm just starting up my video there. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much indeed uh, for your kind introduction, Alexandra. 
Greetings to everybody. Um, this is a big moment for, for, for us, and it is a big moment for me, the relaunch of the European Road Safety Charter, which is a precious institution. Um, thanks to everyone at Ricardo, uh, Alexander, and all your team for all the tremendous work you've been doing over the last few months. And thanks also to our very own Sarah Lynch, who is the project officer uh, working on this. And everything I hear says that you're establishing quite a great team there. Apologies, particularly to my good friends Jesus and Vasiliki, because I can't stick around to uh, to hear your presentations live. But I will make sure I catch up with them on the, on the recorded version of this. Um, again, the relaunch of the of the European Road Safety Charter is absolutely essential. You are our main vehicle for reaching out to this very diverse community uh, we have in road safety, to all the different constituencies. And um, everyone who thinks that different aspects of road safety are important, and there are many different aspects. I come to join you. I, I think this is the third time I put a suit and tie on this year from a very successful uh, first EU road safety results conference. I say successful, but we, of course, had to note for the first time formally that we failed to meet our target of a 50% reduction in deaths and serious injuries for the last decade from 2011 to 2020. We did actually record, as you probably know, a 4,000 drop in road deaths because in 2020, 17% decline. But of course, we know why. Uh, it was because of the COVID epidemic. And unfortunately, what is also clear is the decline in road deaths did not meet, did not match proportionately the decline in road traffic. So we have some work ahead of us, ladies and gentlemen. The European Road Safety Charter has been around for a while. It's it already uh, is proud to be to have more than I think 3,000 members. I'm sorry, it's probably not the exact number. I didn't check. Um, there has been a lull in our activities at, from Brussels. I'm sure not at your end over the last year or so, partly because of COVID and partly because we were between contractors. Uh, before Ricardo uh, took on, we had a gap, and I'm sorry about that. It meant that you probably didn't get the same sense of um, um, organization and commitment coming from the Brussels end. I'm delighted with Ricardo, with the support of uh, Vias, of course, we'll be driving this forward. You are very dependable partners, I now know, and, uh, and cherish that. We want to take this solid foundation we have with the Charter as it is and build an even greater presence and awareness of the Charter right across the European Union. We need this network to help us increase cooperation, to inspire more people, um, to get more organizations involved. And ultimately, of course, this is because having, notwithstanding we've missed the target for the last decade, we are back on the horse. We are going for a 50% reduction for the decade 2021 to 2030. Um, and we're going for it. We're going for it big time. We have a new European road safety strategy, which I'm sure you'll be, you know about, and, and, and we need you to disseminate. One that relies on and is based on the safe system, the vision zero uh, uh, process. Um, and you know we will not achieve this target without a step change in our ability to drive citizens' involvement and behavior change across Europe. I think I just quoted in the last conference um, a famous quote of Einstein, which is the definition of madness is carry on doing, carrying on doing the same things and expecting different results. And that's what we can't afford to do in everything we do, whether it's legislative or otherwise at the European, national, regional, or local level. And the same applies to the Charter. We need to, to rethink to work out how we can play a more effective uh, role together. And our goal, our view on that, is that we need to build a stronger presence at national level, in particular through the Charter, um, and thereby through you, the national relays, to increase awareness amongst the different types of organizations and entities. For example, think of all the different players uh, in the motor industry and in transport more generally, large or small employers who run fleets of cars vans or trucks. All the different research uh, institutes, maybe not to even just the specific road safety institutes, but those that handle injury prevention, health issues more generally, making those connections with the sustainable mobility group, uh, which is uh, um, uh, also, I think, uh, something which the Stockholm Charter encourages us 
encourages us to do. The education sector. Schools and universities are often some of the best vectors for the messages that we're trying to deliver, particularly on things like active uh, uh, mobility. And of course, last but absolutely not least, all kinds of NGOs, large and small, we need you and we, we, we want you inside the, the European Road Safety Charter tent. One of the great things about the Charter in the years gone by is how much we can learn from each other. It's a fantastic vehicle for exchanging good practices and mutual learning. Just recently, a, a new member, a, a Finnish pharmaceutical company, reached out to us and said, we need to find uh, similar companies in other member states with whom they could exchange ideas um, of, of, of relevance to road safety. So there's so much potential here. So it follows, I think, from that, that you, no pressure, you, the national relays, have an absolutely vital role to play here. Thank you to all of you who've established relays, relays and have been doing your work for a, 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 a number of years. Thank you for what you're going to do in the future with us. And I think it, the importance of the relays is that if you think about just road traffic law, road safety remains a national business. It's France and Portugal and Denmark and Poland that set their speed limits um, that decide on their road traffic laws, on their penalties, on their levels of enforcement. And so much of that remains the base to what we do. Of course, there's a strong European dimension, and we can use the Charter to echo that, whether it's on vehicle safety, infrastructure safety, or in, in all the other areas. But that's why it's so great to have this strong national uh, links. And you, the relays, know your national context far better than I would ever know. You know who is active in road safety awareness, and equally who is not. You know which ministers are positive about road safety and those which are less positive. Um, you can identify the relevant milestones and events around which to get that crucial conversation started. It could be a local festival. It might be a major national conference. I'm attending a German road safety, a, a national German road safety results conference, and I shall be absolutely plugging the charter there and trying to use that as a basis to uh, drive work forward even further and faster in Germany. You can play matchmaker to, ding, to bring different players together nationally or even across borders. I've worked um, uh, several times and now, of course, I forget the name of the group, but it involved Austria, Slovakia, the Czech Republic, groups of, um, we'll come back to me, I'm sorry, in a, in a minute, the name of the group, but working on road safety across borders is elemental. It doesn't have to be at the European level. It can be through groups of neighboring countries. And the good news is we are going to support you in what you're doing. You'll be hearing from our colleagues in Ricarda and Vias on how exactly to play your role, and but what support they can bring and we can bring for your events and actions. My colleagues and I at the Commission are, will do everything we can to support you, participating in national events when travel allows or virtually if it doesn't allow, amplifying your messages, highlighting the good practices. That relies on you telling us about the good things and the bad things that are going on so that we can amplify them and talk to them. I can talk to people at uh, relatively senior levels in the government. Um, uh, we have a high level group for road safety, which brings in the senior officials together from all the 27 member states. We are your vehicle every bit as much as you are our vehicle. And speaking of good practices, one of the highlights, which I always love of the European Road Safety Charter year is the awards ceremony, both the reward people and organizations that have gone that extra mile or that extra kilometer for road safety, also serving as an inspiration for others who might need a little, a little push to do more. But also, of course, the award ceremony is a great publicity event for everything that you and we are trying to achieve on road safety. We'll be organizing the awards again this autumn. Please start thinking now about the innovative ideas, the successful projects, the new ways of doing things get road safety on the front pages again for the right reasons, not for the reasons about deaths and injuries, but because we are starting to make real change in how we're doing things. And we'll be in touch with you soon about the nomination process for that awards. For today, and again, I'm kicking myself, I can't spend more time with you. My humble advice, but you decide, is to take this chance to meet your partners in other EU countries, share the pains and the gains that you've you've suffered and that you've made in taking things forward. 
share the energy that I know so many of you generated um, and, and sometimes uh, can exploit at the European level to take back home to your home countries. Reach out to those organizations and learn from your partners in National Relays what kinds of organizations they reach out to in terms of generating involvement. Form alliances at home and abroad with all of those who share uh, interests. Um, I want to stop there because I've already taken way too long, but I just wanted to say that from the humble perspective of the European Commission, what you are going to do, your actions, your commitments to boost road safety, your actions to gather other people's commitments to boost road safety, are going to be completely fundamental to achieving Vision Zero in Europe and completely fundamental to our work in the decade. So um, I'm available uh, at any moment whenever you wish to discuss something. Um, I can be reached, uh, I do quite a lot of social media on Twitter at Matthew, at Baldwin Matthew underscore. And don't forget the Charter's own Twitter handle at ERS Charter. Um, and they are very active on social media. And, you know, this is another great, uh, another great uh, vector. I'm sure you'll be hearing more from them about that as well. Sorry to speak too long, uh, uh, Alexandra. Uh, thanks a lot. I'm stick around as long as I can, and then I'll quietly slip away when I can't stay any longer. But um, thank you for everything. Thank you very much, Matthew, for setting the scene so well and starting off our discussions today. Um, as Matthew said, unfortunately, he will not be able to stay with us for the whole uh, event today. However, if there are any sort of key questions, maybe we can take one or two. Um, as many as many as we have time for, or you can bear. <laughs> Great, Thomas. Are there any questions? I can't see any in the chat, or are there any raised hands? I'm not seeing any coming through just yet, but or just to... comment. I mean, or anyone who wants to say anything they like. Huh? Thomas, sorry, I interrupted you. Just to reiterate, it. Uh, please send your questions uh, to me. Uh, that's Thomas Harold in the chat function. Uh, you can open that up by clicking the chat icon at the bottom center of your screen. Well, if there are no immediate questions, um, maybe they will come later. Matthew, would we be able to send them to you by, by email after the event? Of course. I mean, either via Sierra or direct to me on email and, um, and also problems of uh, comments as well. I mean, on how we've gone about this. Of course, we've arranged the contract which which uh, Ricardo and, 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 and Vias are working on. So if you have any comments on, on any of the arrangements, you, you let us know. Um, I function quite well, I would say, on the basis of constructive criticism. I want to hear if people are unhappy or they're struggling or whatever it is. We want to get strong national relays going in every country. Um, it's not straightforward in, in some countries. Um, and we'll be working very hard to, to help connect all those dots up. Um, but if I could just leave you with one message is that I think COVID cost us quite a lot of momentum in road safety. Um, this time last year, we were coming out of the Stockholm Road Safety Conference with a powerful declaration addressing so many of the things that we are trying to do in the European Union or at a member state level. And then of course, COVID happened and concerns understandably went elsewhere, and we've lost that momentum. In the middle of the COVID crisis, we managed to convert the Stockholm Declaration into the UN General Assembly Resolution. So this is backed now at UN level, and we're now hard at work at producing a global plan of action. And put in your diaries the UN Global Road Safety Week from the 18th to the 23rd of May, where we'll be having, I think, quite a powerful campaign on the 30 kilometer hour speed limit Hashtag love 30, hashtag streets for life. Gosh, sounding like someone under the age of 50 here for a moment. Um, and there's lots of different ways in which uh, progress is starting to be um, renewed. And it makes sense because if you look at the global numbers, it's a bit better in Europe. But if you look at the global numbers, the number of people who have died uh, uh, sadly in the COVID, uh, to the COVID virus during the course of 2020 was pretty close, certainly the same order of magnitude to the number of people who die globally on our roads each and every year. And I think so there, the, the notion of road safety as a pandemic, as a health issue uh, is, is, is going to come and we need to exploit, that sounds the wrong word, we need to use this um, 
broader sense of action to save and preserve public health uh, and bring that into the road safety sphere uh, as soon as we can. It's a good moment to be relaunching the relays. Thank you very much. Um, I suggest we, we move on then. Um, we will now hear from Vincent Leroy on the role of the relays in more detail. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Matthew, for your motivational and inspirational opening speech. I'm very happy to uh, hear that uh, the European Commission is giving us the necessary rocket power to relaunch the Charter. And as uh, Matthew said, you are giving us that power. You as National Relay are so necessary to relaunch that Charter. And with the promised support in several ways, we are having all the tools necessary to achieve the goals we have set out. And in the last few weeks, we discussed uh, and next slide, please. The different tasks and, and requirements uh, that are uh, presented to you as National Relay, where we want to have specific goals set, objectives ahead of us. And we identified the National Relays to, to have multiple roles in that. And the roles that are presented now, I will discuss them uh, with specific and uh, understandable examples for you so you are aware that we have learned from the past to achieve the ambitions we have for our future. Next one please. So as National Relay you are a very important promoter not only to raise awareness on the European Road Safety Charter but also on different other aspects. Raising awareness is the first and most important a step to take to create more awareness in the member state level and at the local level. And communication is crucial for that. And therefore we have developed as charter team specific ways for you to support that, to raise that awareness. And specific examples are the newsletter, the social media channels, the updated website, and to support uh, that, we need branding material. So in all communication activities you have, whether you send out the newsletter, whether you retweet a, a message of the charter, whether you have organized a webinar on a specific road safety uh, topic, whether you participate in a third party event and where you represent the charter and where you present yourself as a national relay, or if you are stimulating your members in your member state to apply for that award in good practice, the branding is crucial to aim at that topic in raising awareness. So therefore, that branding material in the communication is crucial to have that stronger presence at the national and the local level. So that specific material is something we will give to you and you can use in all your own communication, showing that you are an engaged charter member, more specifically, that you are the national relay to support that. And therefore you as national relay, you are the best placed, as Matthew said is as well, to feel What's living in the streets? What are people having in their mind as a concern, as a challenge? What problems do they face, whether it's local or national? And therefore you are the best placed organizations to support us on that, to have this more tailored approach, because that's so important to raise the awareness and to create more attractivity to stimulate engagement and certainly commitments. And that commitment is very important. It's not the case in having more members of the charter. The purpose is to have more active members that take real actions to improve road safety, to have our zero deaths on the roads. Next one, please. Another role as National Relay is connecting. 
connecting at local and national, but also at international level, connecting members with each other. The nice example Matthew gave on the French pharmaceutical company is a very interesting one. It's an international cooperation that we want to see there. And that can only happen if we connect with each other, if we communicate with each other. So liaising between members or potential members is also an important task for the national relay. So that they are aware that you are the national relay and that they can get in touch with you to liaise with the right partner, with the right organization to make things happen. And once again, that tailored approach is very crucial to make it sustainable so that people feel comfortable in their role as charter member, in their role as partner of a partnership. And only in that way, we can strengthen the road safety community in general and the charter family specifically. So making links, connecting the dots, solving the missing link, that's an important role for you as a national relay. Whether you are developing a road safety action plan, whether you are organizing a charter workshop or organizing a charter webinar, that's so important to create the connection between the road safety family members. Next one, please. Communication, we have experienced in the past, that is so important. And therefore, in this new approach, the 24 EU, EU languages are very crucial to have a strong collaboration between each other. Reaching out to the member state level may not stop because of a misunderstanding of bad language skills. So therefore you as a national relay are invited to support us on that. Content can come from you, can come from us, and language support is also something where we rely on your experience. We will translate our content material and you will be asked to review it so that the message we want to deliver on the local and national level is well understood, is having an appeal so people feel that call to action. And we don't want to see it failed because of a less, lesser use of words. Uh, use of language is therefore so, so important because only in that way we are convinced that we can have a better mobilization of all road safety stakeholders at the member state level. So communication, not only on branding, but also in content and the use of the right words, the use of the right expressions is crucial. For the upcoming newsletters, social media messages, press releases, you will be asked to review what has been translated by the charter tree. And after confirmation from your side, we can take the next real step in reaching out to the charter family. So that tailored communication is very crucial. And there you have a very important role. Next one, please. Facilitator, the fourth role we see for the national relays. Not only we want you to reach out to the current charter members, you will receive from us the database on the member state level. Who do we know until now is being a charter member? Reaching out to them is inviting them to show that they are still a member, is showing that we are still alive that we have relaunched with that new rocket power and not only asking them, are you still alive as a member, but encouraging them to become a more active member and to reach out to their own network by inviting their own road safety family in becoming a member 
So our family of charter members is becoming not only bigger and bigger, but also more powerful, more able to make a difference on the roads and to show to each other, we are taking real commitments. And you as a national relay has a very important facilitating role in that. So you can be the source of inspiration, just as Matthew is one of ours now in our opening speech of this relaunch event and kickoff event for you. If those members reach out to us in need of help, in need of assistance, in need of connecting, then you can take that important facilitating role in once again connecting the dots, liaising between each other. And once again, the example of the French pharma company is a very inspiring one. We have other examples as well, and they will be shared through the newsletter, through the social media, through the website in different ways. And once again, it's up to you to translate them into their own local national context. So people understand what it's all about. And that facilitating part is so important to have all road safety stakeholders in the member state on board. And the new call for voluntary commitments, aside the call for good practices, is a very important one. So we can reach out to the charter member family and say, okay, we have the call for good practices. And we have also a new call for voluntary commitments where we invite the charter members that go beyond the legal requirements to improve road safety, to improve road safety, to step up and to show to the charter family what they have learned, what they have reached, what was the impact on their real engagement with that voluntary commitment. You can take an important role as a facilitator to reach out to your members in your member state, to stimulate them, to share that voluntary commitment, to inspire others to do the same with the local approach. Next one, please. Supporting, as we, as charter team, as the European Commission is supporting all of us, the national relays in increasing awareness, in increasing the level of activity of the members, you as national relay have also that important supporting role. The several ways of communication, the newsletter, the website, the social media, webinars, award ceremonies, third party events. It's very important you as a supporter to take that opportunity to network, to get in touch with each other and to use the powerful strength of knowledge sharing, reaching out to others with the good practices that we share between us to use as a source of inspiration but also as a level of attractivity. So others are more curious to know what is the charter? What's the added value for me to become a member of the charter? And if you can support that message to your own national and local charter members, then we have a few steps we can take ahead. So that dissemination of good practices is very important for you to support that. And having it in the national language makes it more accessible, more useful. And that's what we want. Workshops, webinars, events, whether it's national or international, the right communication is very important where we, where we once again have you supporting us, reaching out to the charter family, using the right words, using the right expressions, but also to say, okay, this is what lives in our member state. This has happened locally, and this is what we need to talk about. 
where we need to discuss it, this and to raise it to the international level to make things happen, to make things change. So you as National Relay are also invited to help us in the organization of these kinds of events to raise the awareness on the charter, but also to take once again, real action to improve road safety. Next one. So in brief, you as National Relay are an ambassador. You know, what's important to have that bottom-up approach, to have the local national members engaged, committed to take real action and to become an active member and pick it up to the international level. Because once again, the European Road Safety Charter remains an EU initiative. And if we want to have the member state level engaged and committed, you having that crucial role as National Relay, you being that important ambassador, that's why we are here now. Because you are representing civil society in your member state. And the next slide shows us an overview of our current confirmed National Relays. We almost have everyone in place there are some approvals awaiting for us. The green ones have formally confirmed and the gray ones, there we need some formal approval. And this overview of the 27 member states and the almost 27 national relays shows us that the European Commission is convinced that, that this new approach, which far more support than in the past, tailored to the member state level, will make a huge difference. And we hope that the momentum we are building up will have a post-COVID effect. So we will see an increase in road safety. And your approach, supported by us as Charter Team and the European Commission, can make that difference. If you have specific questions, you can raise them in the chat or afterwards, later on this kickoff event. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vincent, for the detailed introduction of the role of the National Relay. We actually have a couple of questions in, in the chat. Um, so one of them is um, just uh, seeking reconfirmation that uh, national relays will have access to nationally registered organizations info. So I assume that is member info so that the national relays can approach them, tell them the ERC charter is relaunched and, and that they are the national relay organization for the specific member state. Yeah, exactly. The sharing of the member state level uh, data on who is our current member in our member state is very important to have a clean uh, database. But there's another objective is showing that we have relaunched the charter, that we are still there and reaching out with that uh, additional message is also very important, not only to receive confirmation from the member okay, you are still a member, but also to invite them to get curious again, to show that we are still alive and uh, more alive than before. Thank you. Um, and then we have another comment, uh, but I suggest we pick that up later in the communications uh, discussion, which is that Twitter is a great social media uh, channel, but it is used by only a small fraction of, of stakeholders. So um, the hope is that the Charter will also be active on Facebook, which indeed we are, but Lindsay will tell you all about the use of, of social media um, later on. Thomas, are there any other questions? If not, then I suggest we, we move on. 
No further questions at this point, uh, Alexandra, no. Thank you, okay. Um, so we will now move on um, to a case study from one of the uh, previous national relays. And we will now hear from, and I think we now hear a joint presentation from Fernando Camarero and also Jesus Moncluse um, from the Fundación Mark Frey in, in Spain. Um, and they will share their experience, vision, and also challenges uh, of being a national relay. Just go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. we can. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hopefully you will also see me, but first of all, I want to apologize because I had a health, family health issue this morning and you know luckily enough it's been taken care of and i actually didn't want to to you know to miss this interaction opportunity with you so i we will be sharing with my colleague fernando and i also thank fernando for the flexibility because 10 minutes ago he was going to make the whole presentation now we are going to share it so if we move to the next slide and uh, you know and before you know uh, i wanted to explain how happy that we, how proud and privileged we feel that we are because of uh, being part of this uh, network we were together uh, i think this morning in the european results conference and uh, i think there's a lot of responsibility nothing that we cannot uh, um, uh, really be success, successful, but uh, there's a big responsibility for, for improvement. I just went to the Cambridge Dictionary and uh, actually Vincent um, explained very well, you know, perfectly what uh, it is expected from, from ourselves. But, you know, if you go to, to the second definition and, uh, you know, it says like there is a group of people, you know, a relay is a group of people who continue an activity that others from the same team or organization have been doing previously. And, and I also think this is a very important issue because I, we must really acknowledge, um, you know, all the work that has been done before this, this moment in time. It, and uh, it's, um, you know, so challenging and so exciting and so thrilling at the same time to be able to, to be part of this relay race. You know, the relay race is a very normal con concept uh, in sports, in Olympics. And, you know, um, if we want to think about that, it's the a race against death on the road. So I can't think of anything more important than that. So if you, we move to the next one, and I think you know that Vincent has actually already um, explained all the issues. I just wanted to, to emphasize a little bit, and, and with this slide that we are watching now, uh, I will give the word to, to Fernando. But before uh, passing the word to, to Fernando, please, uh, you know, stick with me because I want to, to emphasize another thing. I think that the European Union is the largest socio-political initiative in the history of humankind. And, you know, I don't, I don't pretend to, 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 you know, to write nice sentences, but I fully believe what I just said. And uh, if we think about uh, road safety, the European Union is also the safest international region in the whole world. There might be some uh, safest countries, you know, outside the European Union, we might think about Norway, but we might also think about, uh, you know, maybe New Zealand, Australia, some other countries which are also leading the way in terms of road safety, Switzerland and some others. But, you know, largest socio-political initiative, safest region in the world, and the charter. The charter is actually the largest road safety network in the world. I don't know any other network with around 4,000 uh, members. So just remember that we are going to be stronger together. And, and I hope that we will be able to put or run that extra mile that it will be needed by 2030 and, and, and in order to improve the, the data, the figures, and as I said, to win this relay race against death. And Fernando, would you like to, to continue from here? Yeah, sure. Um... 
Very briefly, uh, let me give you an idea about the entity the system I represent uh, today. Fundación Mafra is a non-profit organization created in 1975 by Mafra Group, one of the largest foundations in Spain and probably in Europe as well. I'm firmly committed to road safety and in general with society as a whole with the deadly intention of contributing to the social welfare. In order to achieve this goal, we hold a wide range of activities worldwide focusing on five key areas, social action, cultural health promotion, prevention and road safety, and insurance and social protection. And our project addresses four target risk groups, child, children, young people, adult, and senior citizens. Next one, please. The accident prevention and road safety area aims to prevent every type of unintentional injury because we are convinced that the vast majority of such injuries are avoidable. Our three main aims are basically, firstly, to educate children and young people on how to prevent injuries caused by traffic accidents, fire and domestic accidents as well. Secondly, to raise awareness and convince those in charge of public policy, technical expert and professional workers in general, and ultimately society as a whole, that it is possible to arrive at goal zero in terms of serious or fatal injuries. And thirdly, to do research in order to devise objectives, cause effective action, and also in order to attract media attention, in order to spread the message in society. Our activities are carried out through several educational programs and awareness campaigns on road safety and on preventing injuries in the home and fires. In this context, uh, I would like to headline those of our activities whose road safety components include specific actions regarding child car seats for cars and encourage good practice on the part of young people, cyclists and motorcycles. Next one, please. Uh, as I said, our activities are not restricted to Spain. We have carried out action and accident prevention and road safety campaigns in 23 countries, where we have rolled out a huge number of activities, mainly in Latin America, Europe, and Turkey, as well as United States. Um, next one, please. And about our previous work as National Relief, this is summarized in a workshop that we are organized in 2019 at Fundación Mafre. So we have little experience and those we can beg you because we haven't received a manual for beginners yet. If you could please contact us with the intention to learn about your daily experience and hard work. Next one, please. Jesus, go ahead. Thank you. Can you still hear me? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, you know, I don't know if you are getting my video, but if, if you do, you will see that I'm in the car and, you know, I couldn't come back to the office, but I'm safely parked in a legal parking place in, in one of the main streets in Madrid. So um, one, of, one of the suggestions for this presentation was actually to uh, focus on bar barriers and ways to overcome them. And I've prepared together with Fernando, we've prepared this list here. You see that there are some barriers, but there are a lot of ways to overcome them. That's the first message. So one of the things, uh, the challenges that we're facing in Spain is that it's, um, Spain has around one fourth of the whole network there are members from Spain. So that could be a barrier for action, but we will see that, you know, very quickly we can move that, we can uh, shift that into an opportunity. Uh, we think that there might, we have seen a little activity during the last um, few years. So that's something that we need to, to work in the next uh, months or weeks. And also probably some of the commitments are uh, aging commitments. So um, I can imagine that some members you know, are 10, 12, 14 years old in their commitments and the commitments, you know, how the entire world was 14 years ago, it has very little to, 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 to see with uh, all the challenges and all the transformation that we are seeing together. If we move to the ways to overcome them, um, as I said, you know, a large network is okay. We don't need to fix that. We just need to mobilize them. We need to uh, support 
all to, to obtain support from previous contact points. And actually, we were very happy last week that we were talking with um, Raimundo Garcia Cuesta, who, who used to, to take uh, the role of um, um, promoting the network in Spain, and he's fully supportive of of our participation as National Relay, and I hope that we will be um, working together with Raimundo. And uh, one of the things that we might need to do as soon as possible is to have an initial round of contacts. Of course, this will depend on, on the debate today and, and you know what I think might become a roadmap of action uh, for National Relay points uh, in the next uh, few days. Uh, we have also thought that we might uh, survey uh, maybe a sample of signatories, because as I said, the, you know, the network in Spain is made of around 1,000 signatories. And in order also, you know, to explore how we could make this renewal of commitments, that uh, I think we have this huge opportunity to, to try to connect and to align the 2018 EU road safety strategy with the activities of the Charter and the members. And also, you know, need to say that, you know, there are huge opportunities also to link and to promote the participation in the European Mobility Week. Also, and, and we were very, I was personally very happy that uh, Jonathan uh, Passmore from, from the United Nations of Safety Collaboration, from the World Health Organization, uh, was very active also this morning. So we also have an opportunity. This is also, in, or this is just some very quick uh, issues to be discussed, to be, you know, shared with them. Uh, we are not talking about anything definitely anything be decided yet but uh, you know i think that we have this opportunity of uh, linking with the uh, united nations road safety collaboration and the united nations road safety week which is taking place next month probably this week is too early but who knows in two years time how we can coordinate also as uh, it was shown in one of our slides uh, you know, all, all the opportunities that the Sustainable Development Goals, the SDGs, will represent, are representing right now. We are actually um, starting all our safe, uh, healthy, and sustainable mobility workshops for children. As Fernando explained, we will focus on education, uh, talking about actually the SDGs, how the planet is vulnerable, how we are part of the planet, how our body is vulnerable, and from then we, we build on uh, risk prevention. Um, social media, I will not discuss this because uh, I've seen that it will be discussed later. And a lot of interaction, of course, within our, ourselves, within the entire National Relay Network. If we move to the second uh, to last, actually, slide, uh, as I mentioned, I think that, you know, one of the first tasks that we propose in cooperation with uh, Vias, with Vincent, with Ricardo, with the whole network, with the European Commission, is to prepare a roadmap of immediate action for uh, our work as National Relay in Spain. Um, so we, we are thinking that we might be in the position of organizing an event, maybe online, maybe face-to-face -face next year, but not just one event along the duration of the, of the project, but a yearly event. I think we, we've done that, as mentioned, explained a couple of years ago, and we're ready to do that yearly in Spain. Um, as you could see in the map, we have a strong presence in Latin America. And, uh, I, and I'm talking personally, but you know, I would love the Latin American friends and brothers and, and sisters to benefit and to learn and maybe to replicate something that we are uh, reinvigorating today with the charter. So this is a personal and also I should say an institutional commitment. I mentioned also the alignment with the European Union's road safety strategy. And uh, as you could also see in the map, you know, we also have uh, some activities, some interests, some resources actually in Portugal, Malta, Germany, and Italy in terms of the European Union. So we are really eager and happy and willing and ready to interact with the uh, national relays in, in those countries in order to support also their activities in those countries. And we are, have also started to make a list of uh, available networks in Spain. And um, I, I should have actually started this list here with the victims associations that I think, you know, should be at the core of our activities. They're the main motivation um, 
for for what we do today and 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 for the years ahead cities regions parliamentarians uh, we are actually now proposing some changes into the spanish uh, laws some of them uh, or most of them focusing on vulnerable road users there's a ongoing at this exact time uh, debate at the Spanish Parliament, and we are um, working with them. Uh, needless to say that the Spanish Road Safety Council, which is made of around 70 organizations, might be in our uh, sphere of activity. Enterprises, we've been active and we've been supporting the PRAISE uh, European Transport Safety Council project for many years, so we have a uh, many opportunities and actually it was mentioned several times this morning, the work-related road safety, fleet safety as one uh, opportunity of action for the next years and also schools um, there's a new uh, organization which is the Spanish Road Safety Alliance again uh, around 80 members most of them also in the council in the safety council but another opportunity traffic police educators there's a large network many of them are already members of the charter which is called FETEVI they're mostly there are police officers working on traffic education for children firefighters are also becoming more and more interested we run a very large uh, fire and burn prevention campaign and we know that they're really eager to work on traffic safety prevention also to train people on first responders in, in traffic crisis and finally, uh, professional associations and car dealerships. We will be presenting tomorrow a joint campaign with car dealerships, with the main car dealership network in Spain, which are uh, which is made of uh, more than 2,000 2, um, dealerships. So you can imagine that we, if we are able and we are successful with, with that, we will, you know, uh, opening an opportunity of action that I think would be really innovative around the world. And that's all you have, <coughs> sorry, you have the contact details of Fernando and myself in the next slide. Fernando will actually be the national relay point and I will be the sponsor of this organization internally. So Fernando, if you want to say the goodbye words, please go ahead. <laughs> no, just in the last one, uh, uh, just to thank for all of you for this, for this opportunity and all your support or, and all your hard work and experience will be very welcome uh, because will be a, a excellent opportunity to share the, all this magnificent work with all our network of our organization with which we have been collaborating for many years as Jesus said victim association schools company public administration and society in general those with your help, everyone in Spain will be aware of the efforts that the European Union and all of you are making to preserve life in our countries. Thank you so much. Thank you very much both to Jesus and Fernando uh, for your very interesting and very detailed um, presentation describing your thoughts and, and previous experiences. We have a couple of sort of comments and questions for you, if you're happy to take them now. Um, so one comment is the problem with aging commitments should be important to solve this year. Um, and I think we, we all, all agree with that. Um, then there was a specific question. One of your slides mentioned SDG, and um, we were wondering what, what that stood for. Sorry, SDGs are the Sustainable Development Goals, and it was clear in the Stockholm Declaration and the work before, and you know, also in the European Commission. Um, um, documents that we need to frame. I think that, you know, if we think about uh, the challenges for the for the young people, for kids, you know, the, the go even beyond drug safety. So it's uh, one of the last calls calls for the planet, I, I should I would dare to say, is, is this current sustainable development goals. is the first time that, that uh, reduction of uh, casualties and injuries is mentioned at the global world. And we have a lot of 
things to do is something that we think is of the interest of uh, everybody. So it's a way of uh, bringing back some new energy, some uh, reinvigoration um, terminology also to our activities. If we frame what we do within the sustainable development goals, that's that's our main um, you know comment on that sense. And we will be happy, you know, as with any other. Uh, points in the slide to, to discuss it, to get into, you know, more detail to see how we've done things, because I'm sure that everybody will have done a lot of things in the past, in the last uh, years, and how we could, we could move together. You know, SDGs are the main political agenda, worldwide level, so let's, let's take the, uh, the advantage of, of that and let's apply and let's bring it down to road safety. That's our main goal with that uh, terminology and with that framework. Thank you. And we've got one final question before we, we move on. And um, I think you mentioned the European Mobility Week in, in your slides as well. And indeed, yesterday, um, it was the awards ceremony for um, the Urban Road Safety Awards, which is organised by the uh, European Mobility um, Week. So the, the question was, what is the specific link, um, you know, you, you have in mind or which exists with the European uh, Mobility Week? Well, um, I, uh, I um, forgive me if I'm wrong, you know, uh, I try to be humble in my daily work, but I think that, you know, we still there's a, uh, an opportunity to bring closer all the um, European Union activities. Um, that there might be, and actually the week. I think that we should be very active in promoting the week, in supporting the participation of the week. We are at the. I mean, we we just want to to make sure that the, you know we we serve actually, we serve the European Union, we serve the European Commission, and we serve. Uh, you know, the whole network and the project and, and, and our coordinators. So I'm trying to say that, you know, anything that we could be of help, you know, it could be uh, also the day of remembrance in November, you know, promoting uh, the day of remembrance is, is a, a global, is a, a, you know, WHO uh, led initiative, but we might also be active in that sense. In order to give coherence, to support even policy, you know, I, I think that at, at some term, at some point, you know, maybe the European Commission or the Parliament need to raise support for future legislation or for future action. Future action. I think that the network, the relay uh, network, might also be of use, of advantage uh, for, as I said, our I could say that our patrons, our, our, our you know, the European Commission and the Parliament and the European Union. So I, I think that we should be. Um, useful in, in many areas. So the national network, I, I see them as a facilitator, as a way of bringing everything that comes from Brussels closer to the local action, to the citizens in the dif in the in the different countries. I think that one of the mistakes that we see from our local politicians is that when there is a success, they they take credit for the success, and when there is a failure or there are some complaints you know, that they look at Brussels. So we need to revert the whole situation. We need to acknowledge all the benefits from, from what I call the largest and best uh, social political initiative. Thank you. Thank you very much for your detailed answers. And also thanks again for your very inspiring presentation. Um, before we now move into our first breakout session, I would like to introduce you all to Sarah Lynch who's the project officer at, at DG Move, um, And hopefully you can now see Sarah and she will just say a quick hello to, to everyone. Hi everyone, I, I just wanted to say hi to, um, thank you all for the commitment that you're making to the charter today. I know many of you were in the road safety conference also this morning. So thank you for sticking to your chairs all day on road safety issues. I know it's not an easy one. Um, I, I wanted also to underpin what the colleagues have said that really we're there for you and you're there for us, that it's really a two way street in this in this organization, that we want to help you to the extent possible in, in sending out the message, in reaching the right political levels if you need to. Um, 
but we're also really grateful for the feedback that you can give us on what's happening at national level. As um, Jesus was just saying, things like um, in the European Mobility Week, where there are actions going on, perhaps there's an action going on that's focusing on sustainable mobility, but you could bring a road safety aspect to it. Uh, or there's something going on um, for the for the Remembrance Day that's also very important. There could be, you know, International Day of Children. There could be International Day of Peace. All of, all of those things you, you can bring a, a road safety touch to to many occasions during the year. Um, so we really encourage you on all of your events, on all of your networks. I thought that slide that Jesus had on the different networks that he has established in in Spain for how he could reach out to to different constituencies i thought that was fascinating um, and i'd love to hear other examples of different groups different networks that you're um thinking of reaching out to in in the different member states i think really the the sky's the limit and the the more and the the more productive uh, partnerships we can build at national and at european level the better so um any support we can give we're happy to do and i wish you all the very best in, in your work in the in the coming weeks and months. Thank you very much, Sarah. And I think that really sets the scene now for our first breakout session where we will start the networking between the national relays. Um, so you will be automatically put into a, a breakout group. Um, and within that, we will stay for the next 20 minutes. And what we'd like to ask you to do is briefly introduce yourself and your organization, taking up about a minute. Um, and then we'd really like to start the discussions on, you know, the, the challenges and the support that you anticipate you need as, as a national relay to engage both new and existing members. Um, each breakout group will have a facilitator who will remind you again of the task and also do the timekeeping and will also take some notes from, from the discussions. Um, so we will now move to the breakout rooms. Thank you. Right, so I think we are all back from our breakout sessions. I hope you found the discussions interesting and, and stimulating. Um, we will now move on uh, to Lindsay Thiel, our communications lead for the chat at Ricardo, who will tell you about our plans and how to engage with stakeholders and members and what tools and support will be available to you. So over to you, Lindsay. Thank you very much, Alexandra, and um, hello, everybody. Um, next slide. Thank you, Ellie. So very quickly, before I go on to talk a little bit more about our communications activities on the Charter and how we can collaborate together, I just wanted to very quickly give an introduction to our team here at Ricardo and myself. Um, we are a broad team of marketing communications experts from event specialists and social media experts and more general marketing and communication consultants like myself. Um, personally, I am based in Scotland and I have over 12 years of experience at Ricardo working on lots of large scale programmes for the Scottish Government and more recently working on um, Tremis and Eltis with the Commission. So working on the charters, a really lovely complement to those and um, very excited to kind of have that underway. You'll see these lovely people at the bottom of the screen. They're part of our team that you'll probably work with over the next few months and years. We have Thomas and Ellie who um, have very kindly set up today's event and they'll also be working on all of the other events that will uh, operate under the Charter banner. We've got Jess Donnelly who will support me on more general marketing and communication activities like the newsletter, maintaining the website, generating content for social media. And then we also have Les Harding, who's our technical editor and copywriter, and John Marsh, who is our lead designer. Um, and so that's us. So moving on to the next slide. So our communications objective for the European Road Safety Charter is very much to increase the awareness of the Charter and to support its uptake within the road safety community across all of Europe. 
And from my mind, I see that as very much a two layered approach and how we're going to achieve that. The top level being kind of more high level mass communications, more general, broader messages that are taken out to all of the member states. And then most importantly for today and how we will work together as national relays is that more national local level communications, more direct, more tailored messages, more understanding of kind of in country specific issues and how we can tailor the messages to to the individuals in, in those countries. And I think it's, it's really exciting to have this event today to start working with you to understand what those local insights are and to really have you as the National Relays to create a multiplier effect for our messages and our communications. Okay, next slide. So to realize our objective, we'll be utilizing many, many communications channels um, from the website to newsletters, social media, branded collateral to help kind of compound our brand, events, member emails, press releases and, and many more. But in the interest of today and also for the time that we have allowed, I'm gonna focus on just a couple of those points and spe specifically all on those channels and talk about what our plans are, what we're already doing, and most importantly, how you can kind of work with us to really elevate those channels and realize greater effect. So next slide, thanks Hayley. So the first one is our website. So we have recently relaunched the website last week. So we have new content on there and that will be now continually evolving um, with fresh new content. We, an attractive and intuitive website is essential to our success on the charter. Um, and it will act as a central hub for all of our content that we're generating so whether that be good practices, new member spotlights, member events, charter ran events, road safety news, newsletters, and, and much more. And directing traffic to the site wherever possible through our other channels will be very key to our success. And we want to make sure that we also have a strong call to action for users of the website to become members if they are not already and if they already are then to become even more active members but the website is only really as good as our content so that's really where working with you, the National Relays becomes extremely important and we want to make sure as Vincent and Matthew have already um, highlighted we want to work with you to build more good practices, more member stories, when the time is right for you to help us with increasing our award submissions, making sure that we have event information that is relevant to all of the user groups at both national and local levels. Um, and that's really where your role will become really key so that we can keep the website fresh and up to date and engaging. Next slide. The next thing I just want to talk about is our newsletter. The newsletter, um, you can see on the right hand side there of the slide, we've kind of created a new designed newsletter. Um, it's much more visual, engaging, and it really provides us with the perfect opportunity and platform to collate all of this content that we're, you know, starting to generate now um, and take that out to our members and our subscribers. Um, the newsletter is highly trackable so we can continually understand what information is performing well, what's of interest to people and continually learn and improve the, the newsletter as we go forward. As we see on the slide there, it's a quarterly newsletter and it's now going to be available in most official EU languages and our first edition very excitedly was released last week. So our April edition, and that was sent to over 3,400 subscribers and was issued in 23 official EU languages. Um, so for you as National Relays, 
are you subscribed and if you are not then please go to our homepage and you'll see there there's a, uh, an option to subscribe to our newsletter I'd encourage you to do that we also want to work with you to um, encourage sign up at the national level to generate more subscribers and to circulate our newsletter content as widely as we can to your existing contacts. We also use social media to promote the newsletter and to um, share the content within the newsletter. So please do, I'll be talking about social media a bit more in a second, but engage with those posts um, and help us just spread the word and get the, the road safety messages that we are including in the newsletter out further. Um, and very much like the website, the content that you guys are able to um, send to us in terms of good news stories and events, very much like the website, will be of utmost importance to keep the newsletter interesting and engaging. Okay, next slide. Now events are um, an extremely important aspect to our communications and there are kind of three main categories where we're focusing our efforts for events. Um, we have third party events which are um, carefully selected exhibitions and conferences which we will um, have European um, Road Safety Charter representatives at. They will be an opportunity for us to build the awareness of the charter um, in areas where perhaps the awareness isn't great and also drive membership um, and depending on which events we select it gives us an opportunity to collaborate with the national really for that specific country um, and yeah really elevate our attendance at those events the next one is the annual awards which of course Matthew has already touched on but they are a really fantastic time for us to celebrate the good practices and um, share knowledge of good practice and hopefully really activate members to complete projects to start new projects and really inspire people and those annual awards are um, really important for us to work with you not only to gather submissions but also to celebrate your successes at a national level as well. And probably most specifically for our collaboration and working with you is the national events. And we're hoping to have an event within each member state over the kind of contractual period of, of, uh, of our work on the pro program. So over the next few years, and those events will be extremely powerful for us um, to take the messages of the charter, but to really put a national focus on them and to deliver those events in a local language. Um, so it gives us an opportunity to um, engage user groups and members and, and potential members. Um, and we really hope to collaborate with you to generate a kind of toolkit for delivering those and support you in um, delivering those events when the time is right. Next slide. And on to social media. Um, we, our social media, we're already starting to generate more consistent content across our social media. Um, we want to generate uh, messages with stronger calls to action, whether that be to attend an event, to subscribe to the newsletter, to become a member, to share good news stories, promote national events and, and lots more. And the very much like the newsletter and the website our social media is only as good as our content and we want to not only activate and um, our existing following which is you know we've over 7,000 likes on Facebook we've got over 5,400 followers on Twitter but we really want to reactivate that and to grow that following and I think we have such potential for collaborating with the national relays to really to do that so we just ask you to please make sure you're following us i've added the tags for our accounts on the right hand side of the screen but also the qr codes if you've got a smartphone you can scan those to be sent to the our pages so make sure that you're following us 
as the national relay, I would ask you to please make sure that you can share our posts that are relevant to do so. And to really take time to add your local insight to messaging that we're sending out. So if there is um, something you can add in the, in, in the local language, then please do so and just help us to really increase that reach. Um, encourage your members to share their stories on social media and where possible tag us. Use the hashtags that we very frequently use, road safety and ERS. C charter so that we can kind of follow that conversation and engage with those posts wherever possible. Um, and something that would be useful, well, we're building a list of um, the social media handles for all the national relays, but if you get a moment, you can send those to the help desk as well, and, and we'll make sure that we can engage with you whenever we can and, and take your message out to our followers. And like Jesus and Sarah mentioned, there are you know, times when we'll want to do specific campaigns, whether that be Mobility Week or Remembrance Day. And we, as we're kind of building a clearer picture of our communication strategy and specifically our social media strategy, we'll give more guidance on um, those specific campaigns when we can. Next slide. We're working now to refresh the branded collateral that we have available on the charter, um, whether that be logos, posters, PowerPoint presentations, leaflets, email signatures. And once we've done that work to refresh that, then um, in all of the different member official EU member languages but once we've gone through the process of refreshing all of that collateral then we'll be sharing that with you and that will um, help to give you a toolkit of resources that can you can use whenever you're um, attending events or using your own communication channels. Next slide. And I really just wanted to highlight something that's extremely important to us, and that's that we want to really measure our communications um, on the website, on the newsletter, on social media. Um, we have a really kind of robust approach to tracking all of the, these interactions, and that really enables us to learn what's working and what's not, and ultimately deliver better results across all of our communication channels. And as we learn what works and, and what perhaps doesn't work so well, we'll obviously want to share those insights with you um, at a national level so that you can understand perhaps what's proving to be more interesting to members and subscribers within your national relay remit. But equally, we want to continually learn from you and gain local insight and knowledge about what issues are important and therefore how we can tailor our messaging to make sure that we're um, capturing what we need, we need to capture and sending out the right messages. So on to my final slide. So what next really? And as I've kind of touched on throughout my slides, we're um, finalizing our communication strategy. We are refreshing all of the branded collateral and translating that into the uh, official EU languages. We want to start working with all of you as national relays to develop a plan for national events. Um, and as we're already doing, we want to continue to create more engaging content for our website, the newsletter, and social media. We're also now in um, the process of organizing our annual awards, which Matthew mentioned, and we'll be sharing uh, the information about those as soon as we can. And from you, really, we want to just take today and build on the relationships that you've forged with us here at the Charter from today and also within your breakout groups and really use those to elevate the work that you're doing. Um, we want to continue to learn about your local insights, as I've mentioned, um, and share your good practices with us, share your member stories with us, and, and help us have content which really means something to um, our members and subscribers and followers. Um, and like I said, 
you know, engage with us on social media and just really help us to create that multiplier effect, which will really is the power of the charter and working um, with you all. So thank you very much. Thank you, Lindsay, for a very detailed introduction um, to the communication plans and, and the tools available. Before we move on to our next speaker, um, I have quite a few questions for you, Lindsay. Um, don't worry, they're all fine. <laughs> um, so one, one is really a, um, a, a comment or, or a request. Um, what would be really useful for the National Relays um, to really help with the rebirth, relaunch of, of the Charter is to have some powerful communication um, that really clearly sets out the messages, what's in it for the different types of, of stakeholders um, to become a member. Can you just elaborate a, a bit more on, on what we're planning there? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, at the moment we're identifying all of the different stakeholder groups um, that are across the charter. And as we're going through that process, we'll definitely want to think about, well, what issues are they facing and therefore what messages and what information can we create that will address those issues? So um, I think as we finalise the communication strategy, I think we'll be in a better place to be able to actually detail what those key messages are per user group. Um, so yeah, watch that space. Thank you. And then I've got another question here, and I think that that will be around, um, you know, how the National Relays can support us with, with translations. Um, can the National Relays make language corrections to the newsletter? Can you just expand maybe on and how we're seeing that process working? <laughs> yes. So um, with brutal honesty, the first version of the newsletter was perhaps not the way we would work. Um, we, we did a, a kind of combined approach of using translators and also in-house uh, with Ricardo and Vias. But moving forward, we want to be able to create uh, an English version of the newsletter, which will then be sent to all of the national relays um, as a machine translation. So you'll have the English version of the newsletter and the machine translation into the national language. And then we would be asking national relays to review that machine translation and make edits where necessary. We'll then import that into our newsletter um, software, which will make it look all beautiful before it gets sent out. So at that point there, there will be an opportunity for you to edit in the, the national language. In terms of the previous newsletter that went out last week, the ones that are sitting in individuals inboxes, we can now no longer edit. But if there was something specific that you wanted edited for the national language that now lives on the website, then we would welcome that and we can make an edit on the website um, at any moment to, to change that if, if somebody's found something that needs to be um, edited. Thank you, that's, that's really helpful. Um, staying on the sort of language translation theme, um, what, you know, we're asking National Relays to send information to us. Um, you know, do we expect that information to be, be, to be sent to us? Or, you know, will we be happy to accept information also in the other member state languages? Um, yes, I think that we would hope that things would be communicated in English, um, but if things come to us in um, the national language, then we can translate that on a machine basis or use our, if anyone in-house in has got language skills in that area. Um, so if that's a barrier for them to share the information, then just to send it, but we will be, um, posting information onto the website in English and using the automated translation on the website to create that in the multiple languages. So we're possible in English, but if that's a barrier, then um, just send it in the national language and we'll do our best to translate that using machine translation. Perfect, thank you. A um, couple more questions and then I think we, we have to draw um, this session to a close. Um, so, 
what are our thoughts on using um, LinkedIn? Obviously, you said we're going to be using Twitter and, and Facebook. Yes, that's right. Um, LinkedIn can be an excellent platform, but I think at the moment we are just focusing efforts on Facebook and Twitter because they are existing platforms. It's not to say that there won't be a moment that we deem LinkedIn to um, be something that we want to look into um, but we also recognize all of the different user groups across the charter and members being extremely varied um, LinkedIn's quite a professional platform but that's not always the case um, when we look at those who engage with the the charter so for the moment we feel that Twitter and Facebook provides the kind of more all round platform for accessing those stakeholder groups. Um, but that's not to say that in the future we wouldn't look to do LinkedIn, but we're just going to focus our efforts on reactivating Facebook and Twitter for now. Okay, thank you. And I'll, I'll um, ask one final question. I know there are a lot more in the chat, but hopefully we'll have time to, to pick them up later. Or if not, uh, we will definitely follow up on them after the event. So um, how will we be re-engaging existing charter members? What are our plans there? Well, we're planning to do um, our first communication to um, members who, specifically members and not just newsletter subscribers, in the coming weeks, um, introducing the national relays. And as part of that, we also want to talk about our event today um, and we also want to make sure that we can share new member stories and good practice stories to help really activate them and realise that we are reinvigorating the charter and that we want them to kind of come back on board and look to how they can start to reactivate their projects and programmes. So in the coming weeks, we'll be doing our first specific member communication and then we'll take it from there. Okay, thank you very much, Lindsay. Um, as I said, there are some more questions, but I'll hopefully we can we can take them um, later on. Um, I'll suggest, giving the time, we now move on to our next presenter, who's Vasiliki Danelli Milona, who's president of BOD at the Road Safety Institute RSI Panos Minolas in in Greece. Um, who will be describing her experience in supporting the Charter and the vision for becoming a National Relay. Over to you, Vasiliki. Thank you, Alexandra. Good afternoon to everybody. I feel really privileged and challenged uh, to address you all uh, concerning the largest civil society platform on road safety, the European Road Safety Charter, and uh, sharing knowledge to take action for road safety. Uh, talking about uh, our organization, next slide, please. Um, the Hellenic Research and Educational Institute uh, for the Prevention and the Road Safety and Reduction of Traffic Accidents, Panos Milonas, was established uh, 16 years ago after the tragic loss of my son. Uh, on uh, his 22nd uh, year of age. He was completing his studies as aeronautical and medical, mechanical and aeronautical engineering, and he was the youngest accredited journalist in WRC. Um, this, um, uh, this unfortunate tragic event uh, fueled the establishment uh, uh, of uh, the Road Safety Institute, starting from his university, and of course, we supported this from the family, and uh, very soon many organizations uh, joined. Uh, RSI is a non-for-profit uh, independent organization, non-governmental organization, uh, but we work very closely with uh, governmental, uh, with the government uh, authorities and the private uh, sector. Our vision is a world without road crashes and uh, our mission to raise awareness for the society and also to support the government and stakeholders to act uh, for the prevention of road, uh, road uh, traffic uh, crashes. 
Next slide, please. Basically, our work is based on uh, three pillars, three strategic pillars. We, you have to have a strategy to go ahead. The first pillar relates to general policy on road safety. We do a lot uh, uh, working with stakeholders, stakeholders, um, authorities. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, we analyze and evaluate road safety measures. Um, I very often uh, I am invited in the parliament, the Greek parliament, uh, to present our views and proposed uh, measures on uh, the improvement of road safety. Uh, this was done recently also for the new law on micro mobility. Uh, the second pillar has to do with uh, road user behavior. We do a lot on this pillar education, advocacy, lots of campaigns uh, nationwide and not only. And the third pillar deals with infrastructure, the implementation of international best practices and the treatment of high risk sites. Uh, our uh, personnel um, combines uh, technological background with human sciences. We have engineers, sociologists, psychologists, uh, researchers, and road safety expert. And this uh, helps a lot uh, in promoting uh, road safety in Greece. I should say that uh, during the last uh, three, last 10 years, um, we had a drop of road uh, deaths in 49% and 63% of serious injuries. And uh, along uh, with the motorways uh, um, uh, implementation, RSI has contributed significantly to this improvement. Next slide, please. Uh, our work has been acknowledged by international organizations since we work a lot and we have undertaken um, numerous initiatives um, uh, on the globe. Uh, we, are, we are in consultative status with the United Nations Economic and Social Council. Uh, we are uh, members to organizations such as um, uh, UNRSC, ETSC, FIA, IRF, uh, founding members of uh, yours. And we have been um, awarded uh, by the European Parliament with the European Citizens Award, uh, by the Swedish government since uh, we have contributed uh, to um, the initiation of the ISO 39001 and uh, a lot more that gives us empowerment and strengthens our, our activity. Next slide, please. For the, this, for during the 16 years of our um, uh, work, uh, we have been uh, changing traffic safety culture in Greece, and um, um, we are really very uh, committed and inspired uh, on the cause. Uh, here are some of uh, our um, uh, examples, uh, some examples of our work for sending traffic safety and mobility education, education for all age groups. You can see some pictures from primary schools, high schools. Uh, cycling um, uh, programs, avenue for traffic safety addresses uh, uh, the business, the corporate business and the um, military forces within the occupational health and safety. Hermes is a project addressing uh, young traffic offenders and their families. The Supreme Court um, um, through decision sent young uh, offenders to us for specific programs. Uh, we do a lot uh, for uh, activating citizens through awareness raising. Uh, we organize the National Road Safety Week every March. We have organized the, the first uh, blood bank for road crisis victims. We do prevention, but we want to respond for this as well. Pit stop for road safety uh, in the motorways, clean up safety days, uh, several activities. Uh, uh, that could uh, serve uh, for you as uh, some examples and ideas that you could undertake uh, as national um, relays and uh, in support mainly of the new signatories who want to commit for road safety. Next slide, please. Uh, 
we do a lot um, on uh, campaigning and advocacy. You can see some examples for the, for uh, speeding uh, during the previous uh, UN Road Safety Week. We did with the support of FIA a wonderful campaign. You can see the the poster. There was a TV and um, a radio spot also. Um, every summer we organize a summer campaign. The title is Enjoy Visiting Greece, Stay Safe on the Road, just to inform the tourists that uh, should be cautious. Um, Greece has done a lot of improvement during the last uh, 10 years, but we still have uh, lots of uh, road accidents, road crashes, and we don't want our visitors to, to be harmed. Uh, at the opening of the schools uh, every September, we organize campaigns for drivers so that they should be cautious and campaigns also for the main causes of uh, road uh, traffic crashes such as um, drink driving, non-belt and non-helmet wearing, um, um, mobile use uh, and all other issues most of you well know. Another campaign, uh, successful campaign was that about the rear seat belt, um, um, texting and driving. Um, uh, we organized the first ever um, um, flash mob for road safety with the support of um, the European uh, Commission. And we also address um, aggressive drivers and um, uh, parental models. Next slide, please. Our Road Safety Institute was among uh, the first, uh, among the first to sign the Road Safety Charter and uh, very first to renew the commitment in uh, 2000, 2010. And we have uh, been um, gaining a lot of experience uh, over that and also providing ideas and exchanging, sharing um, ideas with other organizations. And this has been very beneficiary for our organization, for our partners and for road safety, of course. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, being the national relay in Greece since 2006, we have organized uh, workshops. Uh, you can see some photographs. We have participated the, the, in um, workshops uh, on presenting successful uh, campaigns on how to organize a campaign. Some of our campaigns have been uh, globally recognized. Uh, and uh, I, I was uh, uh, very pleased and surprised to hear in uh, our previous uh, um, discussion a breakout, uh, in the break room about uh, our new colleague from uh, Bulgaria that he has been inspired by some of our, our ideas looking at our website. And this is a good uh, example um, we could gain from uh, good practices. Uh, and of course we have uh, in our website um, uh, all the news about the road safety charter, the link, and the uploading the latest uh, news we used to do that. Next slide, please. Uh, during uh, the last four years, RSI has been the coordinating organization for a cluster of seven European countries, and I was really happy uh, to see uh, in the list of participants, uh, many uh, persons uh, we have worked together. Um, uh, our countries were Bulgaria, Cyprus, Estonia, Finland, Greece, Latvia, and Malta. Quite a combination with uh, countries ranking, uh, ranking highest or lower uh, at road safety. That was a great experience and uh, uh, really inspiring and um, a very constructive collaboration uh, we had. Next slide, please. Now, the main responsibilities uh, during these uh, years of uh, coordinating the cluster of uh, our countries uh, was to, coordinate, to support the coordination of the European Road Safety Charter at national level. 
supporting the national relays and also provide the ideas about uh, the activities of the signatories, monitoring the European Road Safety Charter membership in the cluster, updating the members' con contact list at each country. It's something that has to be continuously and you will have to do that apart from addressing uh, new signatories. Promoting uh, all um, uh, charter campaigns in the countries and also promoting the Excellence in Road Safety Awards, which is an issue you will all have to do uh, with the support of the charter team, of course, and organizing uh, a half day workshop in each of the EU seven countries, bringing together the authorities and the different uh, stakeholders. Uh, and this is something that uh, you will benefit uh, personally, but uh, also the country will uh, have to benefit. Uh, this is a challenge uh, ahead of you. The next slide, please. Here you can see some uh, photos, one photo from its uh, country we have been working with. In Bulgaria, I remember we had uh, four ministers uh, joining um, uh, the half-day conference. Uh, in Finland, <laughs> I see good friends, Matthew was there too. In Cyprus, um, uh, in the president's uh, house, uh, uh, we, we, we held the event with the um, uh, presence of uh, ministers. Uh, in Malta, fantastic event. Uh, Pierre Vela was so active and I'm very happy to see that he's still with the relays and we had the minister, the traffic police and all the key stakeholders. In Greece, of course, we had almost everybody. How could they not uh, participate? Uh, we are very persistent and um, we try to find ways um, um, to encourage and empower them, but also to push them. Uh, you need uh, to combine, uh, and Matthew said that you know who ministers are active, who are not, so you have to find a way uh, to bring them on board. Uh, also seminars in Latvia and in Estonia. Next slide, please. So coming to the lessons learned, the barriers and the challenges. And I should say that I don't, uh, I believe you don't have to face uh, many barriers. Some of the barriers uh, have been uh, tackled and uh, during um, the last uh, two years, the commission has been conducting uh, a research uh, survey and evaluating um, the procedures and looking at the problems. And um, uh, so uh, procedures and uh, problems have been uh, settled. I could see only the language as a barrier, um, but um, since the, um, the materials will uh, come to, to us in uh, our uh, country, in the, our native language, translated from English. And here there is a responsibility to, uh, to review the text from the national language, so as um, to make the corrections that are necessary, to make them on time, so that they could be uploaded uh, duly on the websites and then be sent uh, for information to national to say, stakeholders. Um, one thing is about the inactive organizations. This is a task um, uh, that, um, that has to be done, uh, especially the, with the old ones. And uh, it's important to motivate old and uh, new members. Uh, you have to believe in road safety to make others believe in it. And I, I, I see a huge opportunity here um, to um, increase road safety through the European Road Safety Charter. Uh, Matthew mentioned this 
Tartar as a, a main vehicle. Um, you probably know that, uh, I think it has been mentioned before, uh, the Europe, Europe is the, uh, the safest continent on the globe. But there are disparities between the different countries. And uh, we have a role uh, to, uh, to close this gap between the big disparities. And the charter uh, is a way to help uh, doing that. Um, so I believe that um, it's not so such a difficult task. You have to be committed, you have to be competent, and you have to involve the national and the local authorities, working with the municipalities, addressing um, the different uh, ministries uh, who are uh, involved uh, and who have responsibilities on road safety, starting from ministries of Ministry of Transport and the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health, talking about uh, prevention um, are issues that you have to do and you should not be discouraged. Uh, it's something that uh, will bring together organizations uh, uh, from uh, different uh, areas for a common goal. Next one, please. So here I, I see a great uh, importance and value uh, and uh, value added uh, for being a national relay. Um, the largest civil society platform, networking opportunities with distinguished organizations across uh, Europe and beyond, uh, enhancing the visibility, the visibility as a road safety organization or, or association in your country and abroad, um, bringing local stakeholders together for road safety and say, sharing knowledge and exchanging good practices. Um, the next slide, please. Uh, this is my last uh, slide as tips to newcomers. Keep an open channel of communication with all members. Uh, try to uh, uh, establish uh, a good relationship with them. Stay always supportive. Ask for the support from the uh, charter team. Share any problem with the European Road Safety Charter team. Sharing the problems can solve the problems. And please seize this moment and accept the challenge. It's a real challenge. You should be uh, uh, privileged and, uh, and proud that uh, you are there. And we are all together and we can do things for um, saving lives and um, for living a better life that um, uh, we all need and uh, we very well deserve. Uh, closing, you can see our contact details, the last slide. Last one, please. I'm very thankful to all of you. I'm thankful to all those who have worked uh, so constructively all those years. And I look forward to meeting you all with um, our new management of uh, the road safety charter and the support of the European Commission, uh, of course. And uh, please don't hesitate to contact me or Vagelis from my team. Uh, you can see here uh, our email, the contact details. Um, uh, you can even call us. Um, you can visit uh, our website and uh, we are here to work together uh, for uh, saving lives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much Thank you for a very interesting and, and stimulating discussion, sharing all the uh, past examples, challenges, barriers, and indeed the very useful um, good tips for, for newcomers. Um, we are running quite a fair bit behind behind schedule. Um, if there is maybe one key question for Vasiliki, then we, we can take that now. Um, I don't think I've got any any in the chat. Is there anyone with a with a raised hand? No, I'm not seeing any raised hands or any questions at the moment. Okay. Thank you very much again, Vasiliki, for, for this very um, inspirational presentation. Um, I, I'll suggest we move on to our second and, and final breakout session. 
Um, hopefully the presentations from our colleagues um, and the national relays in Spain and Greece will have given you some inspirations and ideas for the first three steps that you will undertake as a national relay to engage existing and new members. And as we're a bit short of time, we will now only have 15, one, five minutes to discuss these ideas within your existing breakout rooms. So I think we're all back from the uh, breakout sessions. Um, thank you very much, everyone, for some, some stimulating discussions. Um, as previously mentioned, we will collate and review all your feedback received today to help us plan the support that we will provide to you over the coming months. We're also planning a press release over the coming weeks um, where we will be announcing the appointment of all the national relays and we will also um, aim to include a short summary from today's discussions. Uh, we will contact all the national relay once a draft is ready so that we can work together to publicize the article in your local language and in the national context and share it um, with all the existing um, members of, of the charter. Um, before we close today, um, maybe we have a few more uh, minutes to take any, any immediate actions. Um, I know we are out of time, um, but if you are willing um, to stay on, um, then, then I'm sure we'll have a few more minutes um, to take any, any more questions. I think there were a couple of questions left um, from, um, from the comms session. Um, but before we do that and before people start to leave, um, could I ask that we um, stop presenting the slides and if, if okay with you, we'd like to take a, a photo of, of everyone, um, do, do a screenshot if, if possible, um, which we can then also use in our forthcoming um, com communications. Um, so I think we are actually spread over two screens, but if my colleagues um, can take a screenshot, so if everyone can can smile, please. <laughs> and I think are we are we done with the with the screenshot? No, not quite. <laughs> thank you. All done. Yeah, all done. Perfect. Thank you. thank you very much. So thank you very much, everyone, for for your time today. Thank you very much for for all the speakers and to everyone who's attended and for your valuable input today. Um, I'd also like to say thank you um, to the team here at Ricardo and Andreas for the smooth organization and, and running of today's event. Um, as I said, if you want to stay on, um, we can take a few more questions, um, but also what we really value, um, in addition to the feedback that you've already shared with us today, uh, we'll be distributing a short survey um, and I think the link will become available on, on the screen now. Um, if not, we'll, we'll follow up um, by, by email with that and it would be really valuable for us to, to get your feedback on the event today. So as I said, um, thank you very much to everyone and we have a few more questions. Um, so I think uh, a couple more for, for Lindsay. Um, one question was, um, how will we be able to measure the impact of the national relays actions at, at national level? Um, say, for example, the national relay sends out some social media posts encouraging a certain action. Um, will, how will the national relay know how many visits came from that particular action. Um, this will, of course, also be very relevant to, to 
measuring impact and KPIs um, for the national relays? Yeah, of course. Um, for, for specific campaigns, we can generate um, links that are specific to individual um, national relays so that we can then track those links back. Um, so there we call them campaign links, but they can then attribute the, the action to, to that link and therefore we can see where they've come from. So for, for specific um, campaigns or, or, or information that we want the national relays to send, we can generate those links and then we're able to track them back. Okay, thank you. Um, and then another uh, question was, um, if we are producing um, leaflets and, and, and brochures, et cetera, um, are we also planning to have business cards with the, with the charter logo um, for, for the national relays? That was something we were just discussing in the breakout room that I was involved in as well. And um, I think that we could quite easily create a template for a business card. And I think that would be actually a great addition to the um, kind of toolkit of resources. So I think that's definitely something I'm going to take away as an action today to add to the list of things that we'll look at when we're refreshing the designs um, and branded collateral. Okay, fantastic. And sorry, Lindsay, another question for you. Um, is the press release going to be shared on the website of, of the Commission? So the, web, the press release I just mentioned on the website of the Commission only, or is it also going to be sent to the national media? Um, if not sent to national media, could, could, could the national relay resent it to, to the national media? Yeah, so the um, press release will definitely be going on to the website and it will be available in um, each uh, official EU language. And um, absolutely, once that's out in the public domain, then we would welcome the National Relays to take that article and spread it as wide and as far as possible. So if they have any um, good relationships with press, which is kind of key to success of working with um, press, then we'd welcome you to exploit that as, as best you can. And that would just help our, us take our message further. Fantastic, thank you. I think I, I haven't got any more questions. Are there, are there any more questions, Thomas? No, there aren't, no, there aren't. The, the last one was uh, the, um, the last question you just read out. So no further questions. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you very much, everyone, again, for your, for your valuable input and, and your time today. And we're really looking forward to working with all of you over the coming months, um, supporting um, the European Commission in achieving its Vision Zero. Um, so thanks again, and we will be in touch um, by email with um, further information. And thank you again for helping us um, to, to shape the plans to support you. Thank you.